Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're beginning a new series of videos on Earth's atmosphere, and it should be a very interesting series. Starting out, let's talk about the atmospheric composition, and yes, we do that by volume. And first, we're going to ignore water vapor. We're just going to look at what we call dry air, and if we only look at the dry air, ignore water vapor because it's a different kind of constituent of the atmosphere, we see that the first three on the list are nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. Together, those three make up 99.94% of the entire atmosphere. And again, only looking at the dry air components without the water vapor. Now, those are very important components. Oxygen, obviously, to make life possible for, for, uh, because we do need oxygen to breathe. And nitrogen, so that there's sufficient amount of nitrogen to keep the oxygen from exploding. If, of course, the, uh, the atmospheric content was near 100% oxygen, the first time a, f a flame would light, the entire atmosphere would explode and burn up, which would not be a good thing. So it looks like there's a good combination there. On top of that, the two molecules, nitrogen and oxygen, are primarily responsible for absorbing the most lethal radiation coming from space, including gamma rays, x-rays, the far UV, and UVC. Those are very deadly kind of forms of radiation, and if those were to make it all the way through to the, atmosphere, to the, to the surface, uh, life would be virtually impossible. So it's a good thing that we're protected from these rays, and nitrogen and oxygen do a really good uh, job of uh, absorbing that. Now, what does get through there is UVB and UVA. Those are less energetic forms of UV radiation, but UVB gets absorbed by the ozone layer in the stratosphere, and so therefore that's also a good thing. Only about 1% gets through, which means that we're protected from some of the more uh, dangerous forms of UV. This definitely would cause a lot of skin cancer if this were to get through all the way to the surface. UVA still gets through, but it's not as dangerous to us. We do get sunburn from that, so you do have to protect yourself against this form of radiation. Now, it turns out that nitrogen, oxygen, and argon are nonpolar molecules. Now, of course, argon is, is just made up of a single atom because this is a noble gas. Therefore, it's perfectly symmetric. No polar aspects of this, to this atom right here. And nitrogen and oxygen are diatomic molecules, and they're they're perfectly uh, symmetric and there's therefore no polarization. So in other words, they're not polar and any radiation going past them does not tug or pull on them. So therefore radiation can go freely past it unless it's one of these forms right here. And so that's why they do not act like a greenhouse gas. The ones in the atmosphere that are greenhouse gases are circled with a red circle here. So water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone, they are greenhouse gases. They do absorb the radiation that goes through in both directions, from the sun to the Earth's surface, from the surface back towards space, and we'll talk more about how these act in the atmosphere. Notice neon and helium, again, just like argon, is a noble gas. There's, therefore, they're not polar, and therefore they do not absorb any sort of energy radiated from either direction. Now notice how much of the other gases are there. Carbon dioxide only makes up 0.04% of the atmosphere. Neon and helium, 0.002, 0.0005. Methane, 0.00018%. So those gases are there in very minute quantities. Nitrous oxide even less, and ozone just about the same as nitrous oxide. Very small quantities, but they do play a very big role in the atmosphere, especially as greenhouse gases. Matter of fact, if those molecules weren't in the atmosphere, we probably couldn't live on the Earth because it would be so cold that just about everything would freeze over. So it's a good thing that we do have these molecules in the atmosphere and we do have the greenhouse, greenhouse effect to keep, to keep us nice and warm. Now, water vapor is kind of an interesting constituent of the atmosphere because it's actually not a gas, it's a vapor, and the amount of water vapor that can exist in the atmosphere depends a lot upon the temperature and the altitude. So here we can see that if the temperature of the air is at minus 42 degrees centigrade, which is pretty cold, the relative humidity cannot be more than 0.01%, which means that the air can hold only a very, very small amount of water vapor, which of course then also means that it is very, very dry when it becomes very cold. 
for those of us that have been in very cold climates, we can probably recognize that, yes, your skin gets very dry because there's so little water vapor in the, in the atmosphere. At much higher temperatures, for example, at 30 degrees centigrade in very tropical regions, there can be a whole lot of water vapor in the atmosphere. In other words, the relative humidity can be much, much higher because the air can hold a lot more of this moisture, a lot more of the water vapor. So the amount of water vapor that exists in the atmosphere does depend a lot upon the temperature of the air. And that is why when you get up into the stratosphere, you'll find very little water vapor because it is so cold in the stratosphere that the air simply cannot hold water. And more than 99% of all the water vapor will be in the troposphere, so much lower, much closer to the Earth's surface. Now notice here that on average, the water vapor takes up about 0.4% by volume of the entire atmosphere. So it basically displaces about 0.4% of the atmosphere and replaces it with water vapor. Near the surface, that percentage is much closer to 1%. So the air is much more moist close to the surface where the air is warmer. As you go further up, the air becomes more and more dry as it can hold less and less water vapor because of course the air gets much colder and the relative humidity drops quite a bit as the temperature drops as well. So here you can see that we have a lot of atmosphere that has no ability at all to absorb energy other than the very high and lethal forms of energy right here. It is the water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone in this order. And the order here represents the amount of radiation that they can absorb or that they do absorb in the atmosphere. Water vapor is the strongest greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. It absorbs most of the radiation that can be absorbed by the greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is the second most important greenhouse gas. Then follows methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. In this order, that's how they absorb energy from more to less. And so that's a good start for getting a feel for what the atmosphere looks like, what it's made out of, and where the greenhouse gases are, both in abundance and in relative importance as to how much energy they can absorb. And that's the atmosphere of the Earth.